Hello everyone, and we are back in video number two. We just finished talking about writing pattern number one, the definition pattern. Now we're on to number two, which is a list pattern, okay? This presents a list of items that are not in any specific order. So I always think of a grocery list like this. Now sometimes I can be anal and I can organize a grocery list by the first things that I'm going to get in the store. So when I walk in, I know produce is going to be there. So typically I'll put that on my list. And then I go to the meat section and then tortillas and coffee and candy section. And then I've got my cheese and um, frozen in the back. But if you don't do that, like I do a lot of times with my grocery list, it's just a list of things. So if you're moving and you're trying to make a list of all the things you have to pack, you know, like if you go on vacation or something. So with the list, there's no specific order, okay? And the main idea of a list pattern will often explain what the list consists of, okay? So that's our main idea. And then the rest of that paragraph is the list of each item. And so um, authors will often use the following words or things to show a list. So they might use words like first, second, third. They actually might number them one, two, three. They might use letters, A, B, C, um, bulleted points. So those might be the dots. Asterisk, those are the stars. Um, they might use certain punctuation. So if we go back to this example here, um, I'm taking four courses this semester, colon, history, psychology, reading, and math. So here's a writing thing, a grammar thing. If you need to list something, you're going to use a colon right there, okay? Um, and then they can use phrases. There are four types of, five ways to, several kinds of, okay? So your main idea is going to be um, what that list is about and then you're gonna have your list. So let's take a look at an example of this. Used appropriately, visual aids can enrich and enliven a speech. They can make it easier for the audience to understand and remember your points. Your visual aids should meet the following five guidelines. And here they used a quote, or a colon, sorry. One, choose visual aids that truly support your speech. Two, prepare and practice far in advance. Three, Choose the appropriate number of visuals. Four, make your aids as simple and clear as possible. Five, aim for comprehension by everyone, including the people in the back row. So here our topic is we're talking about visual aids and our stated main idea is the first sentence where it can enrich and enliven a speech. And then the rest of the paragraph gives us five guidelines that can help us do that, okay? And so again, they use, they said, you know, the following five guidelines, they use the colon and then they even use numbers one, two, three, and four. Okay. So that's an example of a list pattern. Remember list patterns, the order does not matter. All right. But writing pattern number three, a sequence pattern matters. The order matters. So it's a list of items presented in a specific order because the order is important. Note the difference with the list pattern, okay? So with our list pattern, we had the example of a grocery list where it really didn't matter. We were just writing things we had to pick up. But a sequence pattern, think of that like a recipe because a lot of times you've got to do certain steps first before you get to um, other steps. So first you have to make the batter for the brownies before you can put anything into the oven, okay? And so similarly with the list patterns, uh, the authors for a sequence pattern, they might use words like first, second, um, third, or they might use dates. Um, they might use numbers, letters, and then there's signal words as well. So they might say steps, stages, phases, progression, process, series, or sequence. Okay. So the event or process is what's going to be part of that main idea. And then your steps or your events are going to be what follow. So let's take a look at an example of that. From humble beginnings, trumpeter and singer Louis Sachmos Armstrong went on to have a long career and a worldwide impact on jazz. Born in 1901 in a poor black section of New Orleans, he learned to play the cornet in a reformatory where he was sent at the age of 13 for shooting a gun in the air during a New Year's celebration. 
On his release after one year of confinement, Armstrong was soon playing in honky tonks at night. In 1918, he joined the famous Kid Ory Band. Four years later, he went to Chicago to join King Oliver's Creole Band. In 1925, he started to make a series of recordings that established his reputation as a leading jazz trumpeter. After 1930, he appeared with a wide variety of groups, made many tours, and was featured in many films. In the 1950s and 60s, he served as a goodwill ambassador for the United States. In 1964, at the age of 64, he had his greatest popular success, the hit recording Hello Dolly. When Armstrong died in 1971, jazz lost one of its greats. So here our topic is Louis Armstrong. Our stated main idea is this first sentence. All right, saying that he went on to have a long career and a worldwide impact on jazz. Okay, and to show that, we're going to show his history. But we're not going to talk about his success first and then where he came from. We're going to start by where he came from in 1901. And then we're going to move on to 1918, 1925, 1930, the 50s, 60s, and then in 1964. And then we end with his death in 71. Okay, so this is where a sequence pattern matters because the order matters you're going to talk about someone's life in the order that they lived it all right our next writing pattern comparison and contrast now remember comparison means you're comparing two or more things you're looking at like things how they're similar to each other contrast is when you're looking you're contrasting two things you're sh looking at the differences between two or more things Okay, so in this kind of paragraph, they could be just looking at the similarities between things. They could be only looking at the differences between things, or they could be looking at both. Okay, so you can have a comparison contrast writing pattern in a paragraph, but it might just look at the similarities or just look at the differences, or it might do both. So if you're looking at comparisons, the authors might use words like similarly, likewise, both, same, but if they're looking at the differences, they might say, on the other hand, in contrast, however. So here's what those paragraphs could look like. So your main idea is going to be I, the events, the items, the people being compared, whatever's being compared. And then it's going to list the similarities. Okay? Same with contrast. Whatever it is that you're contrasting is going to be part of that main idea. And then it's going to be the first difference and then the second difference. But you might have a paragraph that does both. So it's the, whatever things that you're comparing and contrasting, and then you're going to show the similarities and the differences. And these can go in a couple of different ways. So let's take a look at an example of this. Here in this paragraph, we have a title, Mediation and Arbitration. Rather than go to court, many business people are turning to mediation and arbitration, two alternative methods of settling business arguments. Two of these are mediation and arbitration. Mediation is a type of negotiation in which one or more third-party mediators, usually chosen by the disputing parties, help to reach a settlement. The mediator suggests ways to solve the problem. The participants do not have to accept the mediator's suggestions. In arbitration, the dispute is submitted to arbitrators. As with mediators, the arbitrators are usually chosen by the disputing parties. However, arbitration differs from mediation in that an arbitrator's decision must be followed, whereas a mediator merely offers suggestions and facilitates negotiations. All right. So here our topic is mediation and arbitration. That first sentence is our stated main idea. So many business people are turning to mediation and arbitration. Um, two alternative methods to settling business arguments. So this is when you have two companies that are arguing and they need to resolve their problems, okay? So first we're talking about mediation. Part of this is explaining what mediation is. Um, so here the two, let's say two businesses are arguing. They've decided, okay, we're going to ask a third party that we both agree on to help us mediate this, okay? So the mediator is going to listen to everything and then the mediator is going to suggest ways to solve the problem. Now here's the thing, when you're in mediation, the two feuding companies don't have to accept their suggestions. Okay, it's just a way to help solve this, but they don't have to agree to the suggestions. In arbitration, 
again, the two companies are going to find that third person to help be the arbitrator. Okay. Um, how, um, and so that here is similar to mediation and they use the terms as with mediators, they usually are chosen by the disputing parties. However, here's a signal word. This is where arbitration differs from mediation. When the arbitrator makes a decision with suggestions, those have to be followed by the two feuding companies. Okay, so that's the difference between mediation and arbitration. Okay, two companies feud, they ask a third person to help. With mediation, the two companies, they don't have to follow the suggestions, but in arbitration, they do. All right, and then we have one last pattern to look at, and I'm actually going to finish that up real quickly in video number three.